Hi, my name is Sander de Recht, and I'm here to show you a little tutorial I did on muzzle flashes. This tutorial is based on the one London Bracewell did for After Effects. My goal was to create a similar result using Blackmagic Designs Fusion. And the number one question on the various forums is, I come from After Effects, how do I do this in Fusion? Well, that's what this tutorial is for. We are going to be using the muzzle flashes from ActionVFX.com. Since the flashes are coming from a pistol, we're going to use these pistol muzzle flashes. And these are going to work very well, because there's a lot of variety. Front, side, angles, and they're in a pretty good resolution. You can angle them just the way you like. So let's get started and start shooting. First we have to add the footage. We are here in Fusion now, and there are different ways to get footage into Fusion. You can use this button, which adds a loader. You can use your explorer window and drag and drop, or to add tools you can also press Ctrl space and type loader, and a loader will be added. So, we're going to import the footage now, and here it is. Well, as you can tell, Fusion by default has two separate views. You can work in both of them simultaneously, or you can look at the before and the after or you can work with just one I prefer to work with the right one because if you then add a tool you get all those buttons here on the right side and for me this feels more natural because all the other tools are on the right side as well the first thing you have to do is to make sure that the project file matches up with the file that you just imported Fusion is resolution independent so you can combine full HD with very small or very high resolution images and they all mix and match together. So it's important to make sure that the project file is in the right setting for the footage you're working with. To see that you go into the preferences and you look at the current open composition which is muscle flash tutorial and then you go into frame format, you, it is set to 24 frames per second, the way the footage is, and also important, it's all set to 32-bit floating color. Why is it important? Maybe you know, maybe you don't, but in case you don't, I'm going to tell you. If you put this in old-fashioned 8-bit per channel, you have only the values from 0 to 255 to work with. So if for some reason you want to put the gain all the way up there, and move the gain back down, all the detail is lost. Now if I change the project settings to 32 bits per channel, you can see that it goes brighter and it goes back again. Since we're using muscle flashes and they are very bright, it's very important to work with 32 bit per channel. Fusion is a very capable compositor, but audio is not its strong suit. It's nice to hear the gun going off. To do this, I exported the audio from the original video file into an uncompressed WAV file, because Fusion works very well with that. So now that I added the sound file to it, we can look at the footage and hear it as well. Very nice. First thing I want to do is to mark the frame where the muzzle flashes are going to appear. In After Effects there are markers. In Fusion they are not. At least not in the same way After Effects has them. But if you go into the timeline and in the spline view, you can press Shift G to get guides. These guides still appear if you go back to the flow. I want the shots to fire at the moment the slide goes back and make sure that happens every time so it will look consistent. So here we go. Frame 14, frame 21, frame 37, frame 42, frame 59 and frame 66. You can just put them in here at 37, at 42 and 66. So now you can go from shot 1 to shot 2 to shot 3 to shot 4 to shot 5 to shot 6. Lots of shooting in only 4 seconds. Since this tutorial is about muzzle flashes, I think it's about time we start introducing them to our scene. Well, there is one thing to look out for. 
I have all the angled muscle flashes here. They are numbered from 1 to 14. As far as fusion is concerned, it's a sequence of 14 frames. This is not what you want to do in this case because then all 14 shots will end up going We just want to import single frames. Luckily there's one way to do this and this is by using the explorer. If you press shift while dragging and dropping, only a single frame will be important. So um, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six sing uh, frames, shift and drag. This way there's only one frame instead of 14. I turn off the loop because we only need to flash for one frame. And for example, we start at frame 14. By default, the file will be imported at frame zero, but you can use this here to put it into the place that you need it to be. So the first flash goes to frame 14 because in shot, it happens at frame 14. There you go. Doesn't that look wonderful? We know it does not look wonderful. It actually looks pretty terrible. The thing is, the muscle flashes from Action VFX come pre-keyed, but Fusion by default expects the alpha channel to be pre-multiplied. For some reason, the PNGs don't get imported pre-multiplied. So to fix this, you go into the loader, into the import tab and press post multiply by alpha. Now that looks like an actual muscle flash. Yeah, definitely. Now, since Fusion is node based instead of layer based it's very important to create a layout that works for you for me a shot is pretty linear you start at frame zero you work your way all to the end in this case frame 96. in a way i look at the node view in fusion in the same way that it goes from the left to the right but you can also build it from the top to the bottom or you can build it any which way you want to because you can put the nodes everywhere you like one thing that's important to remember I did this automatically because I'm used to it, but for the people coming from After Effects it might be new. The way to combine footage in Fusion is to put them together with a merge tool. It's here, it's called merge. The orange arrow is the background, the, for, uh, the green arrow is the foreground, and if you put it there, it goes in there. But like I said, the resolution from the muzzle flash is much higher than the original footage that it's going to be merged over. So that's the reason that the muscle flash is much bigger uh, than it needs to be. Now, there are two ways to fix this. In Fusion, you can use the merge tool and scale down your foreground footage. But personally, I like to work with transform tools. So what you do here is you put the transform tool in there and the transform has a pivot. If you put the pivot at the point of origin, from the flash. After you've done that, you can resize and rotate around this new pivot, which is very helpful when you want to combine these two. You want to repeat this procedure for all the six shots that you want to import. I'm going to fast forward through it now because it's not that interesting. So I'm going to put the various transforms in there because the pivots are more or less in the same position. This one's a little off and so is this one. Done. For clarity's sake, I'm going to rename these tools now. Now that all the flashes are in the right spot, timeline wise, it's time to actually put them into the shot. We can do this by adding more merges. You have the basic shot, you put something on top of it, you put something on top of that, on top of that, on top of that, etc. One way to do this is by dragging the output from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, and one to the other, and one to the other. So we now have six merges for six shots. But as you can tell, the orange is the background. We need those to be the foreground. So we select all merges, press Ctrl T. This flips the arrows around. So the shots are all foreground now and everything here is the background. So this is the first shot on top, on top, on top, on top, on top. So now you can get this great looking result. Well, the timing is fine. 
it's just that the place is wrong. Well, time to fix this. Let's go to our first muscle flash. Select the first transform tool. Now, you want to make this as realistic as possible because a big flash like this is not that realistic. So this is probably more like it. It's about the same size as the smoke that comes out of it. So this feels this feels pretty good, pretty natural. We repeat this for the next frame at 21. And as you can tell, I use the transform tool as well. We have the pivot here and we have the center here. Because if I use the merge tool, it doesn't rotate around the pivot. That's why I use the transform tool to do the actual moving of the footage. In Fusion, there's no such thing as soldering a layer like it is in After Effects. What you can do in Fusion, you can get every step on the way, along the way, by just dragging the tool you want to see into the viewer. So now I will go to frame 21 and start moving my muscle flash to match up with the actual shots. Again, let's not overdo it. Now we go to frame 37 where the muzzle flash is actually the wrong way around now because Rudolf has changed position. The only thing you have to do now is to flip the image horizontally and reposition the pivot. For this you go into the original footage, you go into here, make sure that the size and angle are all set to zero because otherwise they will mess with your head and your pivot point. And you put it right here. Well, we have another shot like that. Here we have to put reposition the pivot point as well. But after that you're good to go. So let's just go back and finish this. As a rule of thumb you want the muzzle flash about to be the same size as the gun. So <laughs> this one's slightly too big. Make the angle correct because if you don't People will notice immediately, even if it's just for one frame. So this looks pretty good. And now for the final one. Now that we have all the flashes positioned the way we want them to, it's time to play it back in real time to see what we've got so far. It looks pretty good, but it needs some work. So let's get to work. Now what I want to do here is to introduce a little variation to these shots because as it is right now there's one flash at 14, at 21 and they're only one frame each. So we're going to make it a little bit longer but not on all the shots because then you would notice that they're the same on all the shots. But what we're going to do here is create another flash at frame 13. For this I'm going to use the same muzzle flash so I copy and paste. I'm going to call it shot one pre-flash and I'm going to move this one to frame 13. The flash is the same of course and then I'm going to put a merge in between the two. Put it on top of there. So now we have the same flash at frame 13 and frame 14. Let's reposition it for frame 13 right here and make it a little bit smaller. So we don't want to do this for all the muzzle flashes because then it would be very noticeable that it would be small flash, big flash, small flash, big flash. So we only want to do this for, well, say the first and the last. So to do this, I'm going to move this one over. Control C, Control V. Put another merge in there. Put this one at frame 65. Again. And reposition this. Make it really small. Change the angle a little bit so it looks like it's coming out of the gun. There you go. Well, that looks pretty decent, except for the fact that it doesn't. It's a little bit darker over here. And it's fire. Fire should never darken your image. 
One way to make this look better is to change the blending mode to screen. So if I go to the merge from the fourth shot and change it to screen, it looks much better. You see, the fire actually makes the image look brighter. So I could change the blend mode for all these merges, or I could take a slightly more efficient approach, which is not the same, but comparable, I think, to creating an adjustment layer in After Effects. To do this, I create a new background tool. Control space, background, add a background tool, and feed this into the original node tree. I make the background node completely transparent, and it's the same size, 1920, 1080, as the original footage which means that all the flashes are still in the same position. So now I can create another merge like this and I can change the blending mode of that merge to screen. Now all of the flashes are set to screen all of a sudden. So this is a quick way to change a lot of parameters all in one go. With the blending mode change to screen, it looks a lot better already. Uh, but as you can tell, sometimes the flashes fade away too quickly. It would be nice if they would, well, if the image would linger a little bit longer. So what I could do is I could combine all these images, put them all together and then move them on my timeline. Or I can be a little bit smarter about it and work with Fusion's native tools. For that, I go to the miscellaneous and set my time speed tool. When I feed this whole node tree into the time speed, I can just say, okay, at frame 15, I want my flash to remain. So I delay with one frame. So now everything I did here can be seen in the time speed one frame later. In effect, I've duplicated this whole node tree, offset it by one frame. So now let's start creating the haze. To do this, I add a blur node to make it nice and soft. I'm going to add a displace node, set it to XY, use the Luma information, but we need something to drive it. To do this, I'm going to add a fast noise tool, put it right over here. Now to make it a little bit more interesting, let's put some more detail in there. So 3.5, yeah, that will do nicely. And something smaller, so it will have more of a smoky, wispy look. If I go into the displace mode and use the offset and the refraction, there you go, you can tell there's some smoke getting in there and the refraction is even more also use a y refraction as well and put it back at approximately the original position make it a little bit softer and use the blend mode in this tab to less to mix the original and the results together and then put it on top of there like so and to my taste, it could be a little bit more red. Uh, now the thing is, in After Effects, you would use a tint tool for that, but Fusion doesn't have one. That's why I created one for those of you who come from After Effects um, as a macro, and I'm going to use it and call it After Effects Style Tint. As you can tell, it has the same basic settings as the After Effects Tint has, but it has some extra options that are not that important right now for us, but you can play around with those too see what they do but for now let's leave this to normal and make the clouds a little bit more red and then turn it back a little bit like so so we go from this to this and then put it on top of there which looks pretty nice but a little bit too much so let's take it back a notch and there you go Yeah, that looks pretty nice, but we're not done yet. Well, one place that has some room for improvement is the small pre-flash, because, well, if you look at it right now, it looks a bit pasted on, because, well, let's face it, that's what I did. But in real life, 
something like this would have much more motion blur it would have been not as opaque as it is so i'm going to work on that one a little bit to do this i go into the pre-flash mode and add a directional blur for this i'm going to choose the radial and put the center of it well approximately here and then make it a little bit longer let's check the end result it has to match up with the angle of the shot. Put the blend a little bit down so it mixes the two up together. And then put the blend of the total down a little bit. Put it like there. A little more intense like this. And I can even put a little bit of glow in there to make it stand out a little better. If I play this one back, boom. That looks pretty nice. I'm going to do the same thing now for the other pre-flash. If you're in a hurry, you could probably stop here and then call the shot a day, but uh, there's still some room for improvement. So that's what we're going to add right now. The first thing I like to do is to make the background a little bit darker so the flashes stand out more. I add a curve tool, color curves tool, move everything a little bit down like that with the curves without the curves yeah much better okay great now it's time to let the muzzle flashes stand out even more and we do this by adding a glow or actually more of a soft glow we'll make it pretty intense work it down a little bit like that create a threshold and then Work it back like this. Blend it a little bit back. And then change the color scale. To make it a little more orange red. Like that. And then duplicate it by copy pasting it. And create a very large radius like this. Maybe even... Well, that's too much. Uh, let's see. 125. And then put the blend. I'll put the Again, a little bit back and then let's see how much difference it makes with the glow without the glow and look how much better it blends into the original scene well it kind of looks good already uh, maybe it would be nice to have the glow also on the afterglow to do this we copy paste and paste instances so this way we also have a glow on the afterglow, so to speak. Now I think it's time to start working on the interactive lighting bit because, well, there's fire, so it should have an influence on the environment. To do this, we create a curve tool and put it behind everything else. Let's make the environment brighter, a little bit back for the contrast as well let's move the red down up a little bit i mean let's move the red up a little bit and move the blue down a little so it has a nice yellow fiery look to it add a polyline mask these are animated by default in Fusion, so there's no need to set separate keyframes and just roughly mat out the environment flash. Make it nice and soft. It doesn't have to be very precise. Just have to move it a little bit so it matches up. Yes, that will do nicely. The only thing now is that, of course, it happens in all the frames and there's no need for that. So we have to keyframe the effect. To do this, we go into the controls of the color curves and animate the blend factor. We put a keyframe in here. Before the flash, there is no, 
and then we go two frames further and put it back at zero boom path that looks nice and now we have to put it on the other places as well now copying and pasting in fusion is a bit hit and miss at the moment but one thing that does work very well is control dragging to do this you go into the spline editor and we look at the blend right here and you can see that everything's animated like that and also the guides are clearly visible so we just click those and drag it like that drag it like that drag it like this and this and this so now it's animated for the whole shot here you go no flash with flash no flash fading out boom shots fired now should you want to emphasize the effect a little you can always use the border width to make the effect larger you can tell what happens here in the original but don't overdo it because a slightly more natural look will work fine nine times out of ten so now it's time to get to work on those finishing touches one thing we want to do is emphasize the actor's face because well when people watch a scene you can put a rubber ducky in the windowsill no one will notice because they watch his face so that's why we have to make sure that that is where the image needs to look the best to do this we're going to add a flash specifically to the face what we can do here is duplicate the curves which makes it even more orange more red create a polyline like so and just work the face and then go through the shot again and just go over all the keyframes now that we have the mask animated it's time to feather it a little or as it is called in fusion adjust the soft edge so it looks nice and integrated and maybe make it a little less red a little more yellow the color might be a little too intense as it is right now it looks a little too intense because we've animated the blend mode all the way here so there are two ways of doing this we can do it interactively by going to the spline view selecting all the keyframes and moving them down or another way of doing it which is slightly more interactive to do this you right click on the blend slider you insert a calculation and then the first animated part is copied over and you say multiply by times 0.5 for example so the resulting value will be 0.5 so you have an interactive way of adding or removing the intensity of the effect now let's look at another preview yes it definitely looks a lot better but there's one thing i'd like to add as well because if you're in a situation like this and the flashes are really um well intense what they do is they bring out the imperfections of the lens that you were shooting with as well so if there's little dirt on the lens little specks of dust uh, they will be lit up by the intensity of the flash so one thing to make the flash even more integrating to the shot is by adding lens dirt actionvfx.com has several lens dirt options available for free download i selected this one we're going to put those on top of the image as you can tell the lens dirt is a very high resolution because this is our original size and this is the size of the lens dirt so i'm going to make it smaller and of course i have to make sure that we can see it so i'm going to put this to screen and look at that isn't that lovely it's really really dirty or maybe this is a bit too much so what we're going to do is to combine the information we already have which is the flash here and use that to drive the masking of the merge over here the best way to do it is to add a bitmap mask which can be found here the bitmap mask uses the information from the image if i set it to alpha channel in this case because i already have the alpha channel here 
So now it will only merge the lens flares where there is an alpha channel. The thing is the blast is so small, it doesn't get noticed. So another way to do this is to drag a blur in there and just make it really, 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 really big. Because that way you get a very transparent blob like that. Now, because I blurred the image, I also blurred the alpha channel. So it gets really soft here, which results in not being able to see the lens elements as much as I would like. A way to change this a little is by using these sliders. As you can see, this way the image pops up more. And since it's driven by the alpha channel, it only happens when something happens in the shot. It's a little bit too intense right now, so I'm going to make it a little bit softer. So you can still see it, but it doesn't get in your face the way it does here. Now I've only used the original flash on the previous frame, but I also want to use this part to light up the frame. To do this, I'm going to duplicate the bitmap and I'm going to use this as well. I'm going to have used the luminance because I don't use the alpha here and make it a little bit softer because the flash isn't that intense, but it's still there. Let's see if it still makes a difference. Well, it's very subtle, so I can put it a little higher and also blur this so the size that's used gets bigger as well. This is looking good, except for the fact that the lens particles are still a little bluish while the flash itself is slightly orange. To change this, I'm going to add one of my macros again and just map the white slightly to more yellowish orange color. So it matches with what we're looking at, or you can even pick it from what you want to do. This way we have nice yellowish dust specks. You can just put them in there, out there, make it a little more subtle. Well, one more thing people really notice is the reflection in the eyes, because if a shot goes off that's as bright as the one we're doing, the most natural thing would be for a small reflection to light up the eyes. So to create something like that, I made a basic background, very yellow, and created four small masks to make a very nice, intense reflection. And if you put that over the original footage like this, with the blending mode not set to normal because then he would look like an alien, but set it to color dodge, you get a very nice, intense look. And then it's only a matter of animating the merge very nice and very intense there are some more touches we can add we could add some additional smoke to the image because well when the gun goes off here's a lot of smoke here's a little bit less so what i was looking for was a little bit extra smoke to emphasize the shot and to make it a little uh, meatier so what I did was get a can of powder sugar, the kind you put on pancakes, and uh, slammed it on the floor while filming it with a small light in my consumer cam, because, well, at the moment I didn't have any uh, smoke elements. I know that the guys at actionvfx.com are busy creating new smoke elements, which I'm sure will be much better and nice looking than my feeble attempts, but for now it got the job done. What I did was use the same background I used for the flashes, added one, two three, four different extra elements, layered them on top of each other and then added them to the scene in a similar way like I did before. And then it was only a matter of dialing back the amount of smoke just a little bit to keep it a little bit more realistic and to keep Rudolph nice and visible. And in the end, it's the difference between this shot right here with smoke and without smoke. You see, it's a nice little bit of extra to make the shot stand out even more. There's one more thing I'd like to talk about, because uh, sometimes when you start grading your shot, for example, if you go from here to here, and you think like, oh, well, that looks like a nice grade, and then you apply it to your final shot, it turns out that maybe it, well, messes up all the compositing work you've done. So sometimes it's a good idea to just put the grade in front of all the stuff you created so you get a nice result over here without the grade destroying all the fine tuning you already did. We're all done. 
there's only one more thing that could potentially make the shot even better and that's the ejection of little bullet shells especially when combined with the right sound elements i don't have time to show you this today since the tutorial is long enough as it is but i'd like to get back to that in a future tutorial well it looks like we came a long way we started from this we ended up here i think it turned out pretty nicely uh, i hope this was useful for you if there are any questions just put them in the comments below and we'll try to explain it even better we really want to make some more tutorials for you guys so if you have any suggestions that you want to see using action vfx stock footage just to be sure to let us know in the comments visit us at actionvfx.com for more assets we also have a lot of free stuff so go ahead and download all of them my name is sander de recht thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon for a next tutorial